The day you were born was the happiest day of my life. First time I held you, <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever put you down. So why did you? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Fresh Prince of Bel-Air tackled serious issues. You just thought that because I'm not a size six, no one would ask me out. Well, not everyone feels like that. I mean, that's just your hang-up, isn't it? For this list, we'll be looking at moments and episodes in this sitcom that addressed heavy topics. Which of these Fresh Prince stories stuck with you the most? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Class Disparity in the aftermath of a harsh and humiliating rush week, Will discovers Carlton wasn't accepted into the all-black Phi Beta Gamma fraternity. You and Carlton got in? Well, not exactly. I mean, you're cool and all, but Carlton, well, he's not exactly our type. It soon becomes clear that this is due to the president's prejudice against Carlton's privileged upbringing. Will tries to spare his cousin's feelings. However, Carlton steps in with hard-hitting truth for the fraternity leader. Being black isn't what I'm trying to be, it's what I am. I'm running the same race and jumping the same hurdles you are, so why are you tripping me up? It's a powerful speech about not invalidating someone's identity just because they had a different experience. As the episode closes, Uncle Phil poses a rather poignant question about this intense topic. When the family responds by silently thinking his words over, the audience is encouraged to silently reflect, too. When are we going to stop doing this to each other? Number 9. Confronting Mortality Come on, Doc. I've got a heart like a bull. Well, don't take it for granted. Although the heart is the strongest muscle in the body, it also has the most responsibility. After ignoring warnings about his health, Uncle Phil suffers a heart attack. Everyone rushes to aid the fraternal figure, except Carlton. He has trouble seeing his dad in such a vulnerable state. To him, Phil is an invincible Superman and can't deal with that image crumbling. Carlton is finally challenged when Will confronts him. Their talk is full of harsh realities about mortality and parental issues. Look, I don't want to see my father with tubes up his nose, okay? Carlton, there's going to come a time when all he has is tubes up his nose. Not my father! Everybody's father! Fortunately, this raw conversation enables Carlton to finally come to terms with the situation. He realizes that it's more important to appreciate the time he has with his father than to avoid him out of fear. This revelation is followed up with a heartfelt conversation between father and son. Sorry I let you down, son. You could never let me down, Dad. I love you. Number eight, your first time. Well, I love you, Ashley, and I think we should make love. <laughs> Together? Since the Banks house had a few teenagers around, it's not surprising to see scenes where characters are coming to terms with their sexuality. But a season six episode where Ashley questions whether she's ready to take another step forward with her love interest hit hardest. Fortunately, her older sister has great advice. Hillary addresses Ashley's feelings and concerns and ultimately empowers her sibling to make the decision that feels right. But I mean, Hillary, weren't you scared? Of course, everyone is, but I was ready. And only you know if you're ready or not. Not everyone has someone that they feel comfortable talking to about the birds and the bees. So during this conversation, Hillary may have acted as a big sister to many young people watching at home. Now, I know you're aware of all the issues. And whatever decision you do make, I'm always here for you. Number seven, interracial marriage. Everybody, this is Frank. Frank, this is everybody. Whenever the Smith sisters get together, you just know that you're in for a good time. But their relationship was strained when Janice revealed that she was engaged to a white man. Initially, Violet Smith is adamantly against the union. She even tries to prevent Will from attending the wedding too. The show makes space to fully detail why she's afraid of the union, while also making it clear that Janice is aware of the potential hurdles she may face in society. A survival, Janice, please don't marry this man. But Frank and I are aware of everything you just said, and we can handle it, sis. Thankfully, Will's words help convince Violet to see her little sister wed. The sweet conclusion to this episode gave us hope that Violet would continue to support her sister's love. Why are you all looking at me? Reverend, go on with the ceremony. We are paying you by the hour. Number six, sexism. As much as we love this show, we have to admit that Will said a few sexist things. In the study of 
human sexuality. So if any of you slimmies who miss out, I'll be more than happy to demonstrate the contents of the book. There are a few examples of him speaking to women in disrespectful ways of making assumptions based on gender. Will occasionally had to learn lessons about his bias the hard way. On one occasion, a prank orchestrated by Carlton and Lisa wakes him up. I thought you were good, but you're not good. You've caused so much pain to so many women. You're just a dirty dog. Another story sees a female boxer teach him a lesson about assumptions. He and Carlton also engaged in a battle of the sexes with Hillary and Ashley. While there are certainly aspects of these episodes that didn't age gracefully, the main message about confronting sexist behavior is still relevant today. Well, I am not crazy, okay? This whole thing was a sorority prank. They wanted me to teach you a lesson. In what? Bladder control? <laughs> No! Respect for women. Number five, drunk driving. Look, I'm gonna go take Jackie home. Wait here till I get back. And you're in no condition to drive, mister. Will's ego gets the better of him when he starts competing for Jackie's attention. After getting completely wasted, he considers driving home before passing out first. He wakes up in a cemetery where he has a life-changing encounter with a group of poker-playing ghosts. The tone really shifts when he talks to Billy, a spirit whose life was cut short by a drunk driver. This talk hits like a punch in the gut. I was playing ball on the sidewalk. This car jumped the curb, took me out. The driver was drunk. Its heavy content makes Will finally realize what could have happened if he got behind the wheel while intoxicated. Even though it all turns out to be a tequila-fueled nightmare, we're sure that this lesson will stay with Will and the viewers forever. You know, I almost got in my car and drove home tonight. Well, let's just be glad you didn't. Number four, substance use. When Will gets overwhelmed, his friend offers him a dangerous and illegal quick fix solution. I'm into whatever gets the job done. To me, it's just freeze dried coffee, <laughs> just in case. It's all but forgotten about until Carlton mistakes his cousin's pills for vitamins and ends up in the hospital. Although everything turns out okay, the guilt still weighs heavily on Will. He eventually confesses that he's responsible for Carlton's accident in a tearful and heartbreaking scene. Those pills that Carlton took, um, they were from my locker. What? Look, Uncle Phil, I was just keeping them in case I needed them. The episode highlights that irresponsible substance use can also endanger a person's loved ones. Look, all I know is that somebody real close to me that I love a whole lot could be dead right now, and it would be all my fault. After Will realizes who he could have lost, the episode ends with his family knowing how sorry he is. Number three, parental abandonment. Hey, Uncle Phil, that is not cool, man, the way you dissing my father like that. The hell with your father. Philip, for God's he sake. He waltzes in here after 15 years? 14. Oh, oh, excuse me. Viv and Phil are skeptical when Will's dad comes back into his life suddenly after 14 years. Sadly, their concerns are proven correct when Lou flakes out on his son once again. This leads to one of the most iconic moments of the entire series and arguably one of Will Smith's best performances. Will, it's all right to be angry. Hey, why should I be mad? I'm saying at least he said goodbye this time. The emotion is so raw that you can't help but get choked up during his heart-wrenching monologue. He's so convincing that many believed he was drawing on his own experiences. While it turns out that this situation didn't happen in the actual Will's life, his acting brought an all too real issue to the forefront. Cause ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? Number two, racial profiling. The plot of mistaken identity takes a dark turn when Carlton and Will get pulled over by an officer while driving a car that belongs to one of Philip's colleagues. Unfortunately, they end up behind bars. When Phil and Vivian come to their rescue, the officers continue to show more prejudiced behavior. Sit down. Hey, you don't talk to my wife like that. Now, wait a minute, buddy. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? Who the hell do you think you're talking to? It's not until a white man vouches for the young duo that the police finally start to work with the banks. 
But Uncle Phil is sure to get in the final word with a strong and impassioned speech about prejudice. So officer, don't tell us to wait and don't tell us to sit down. Just open that damn cell and let those two boys out of there. I'm going to tie this place up with so much litigation that your grandchildren are going to need lawyers. Even after they're released, Will and Uncle Phil make it clear to Carlton that this encounter is unfortunately not likely to be an isolated incident. If you were a policeman and you saw a car driving two miles an hour, wouldn't you stop it? I asked myself that question the first time I was stopped. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Black History. Vivian schools Will on the importance of black history. Will, baby, you can read that book. You can wear the t-shirts, you can put up the posters, and you can shout the slogans. But unless you know all the history behind it, you're trivializing the entire struggle. Accepting others. Will and his uncle aren't as different as they'd like to believe. Let me tell you something, son. I grew up on the streets just like you. I encountered bigotry you could not imagine. Poverty. The Banks family learns a little something about privilege and poverty. Just because you volunteer a couple more days a year than I do doesn't mean that you're better than me. I didn't volunteer at all. Oh, so you're paid to be here. Honey, I live here. Body image. Dee Dee teaches Will about body shaming. That's right, I can't figure out how a brother goes from T-bone to rump rose, that's all. <laughs> Man, that girl is not my girlfriend. I'm not your friend either. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, gun ownership. Let's have the money, come on, come on! All right, hey, hey, hey it's cool, dude. Uh, Carlton, give him the money. During one of the darkest episodes of the series, Will gets shot while he and Carlton are getting mugged. An angry, scared, and incredibly vulnerable Carlton decides to take extreme measures to prevent something like that from happening again. A hospitalized Will is horrified when he discovers that his cousin has a gun. You walking around carrying a gun? What do you think you're gonna do with that? It's for protection. Carlton, Car whoa, man, what do you do? You think it's that easy to just shoot somebody? He urges Carlton to see that his snap decision to buy a gun could cause more problems than it would solve. After a tense back and forth, Will convinces his cousin to leave the gun. I saved your life, man. I saved your life. You owe me! Now give me the gun, Carlton. The image of the bedridden young man removing the bullets as he breaks down in tears is incredibly sobering. While the issues surrounding gun control are complex, this emotional scene sends a simple message about choosing nonviolence. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.